So to get started with Photoshop, I'm going to quickly show you a couple of the tools that I use when I'm doing most of my photo editing. Now I'm not going to show you exactly how I do it yet, I'm just going to show you the tools themselves, you can play with it a bit, and I'll add in the method that I typically use a little bit later. So I have this photo here, I've already actually edited it, and it's even been downscaled just to make it load faster for the internet and stuff like that. Um, for other uses, other things, but it'll work for what we need right now. So I'll just do Command Plus to zoom in, and that looks pretty good. We're viewing it at 100% right now, so it's been downscaled quite a bit from its original size. And you can see some, some JPEG artifacts here on there from when I exported it, just to, once again, make it load faster on internet services. Uh, but that doesn't matter right now. The main things to mention right now, we have our layers panel down here, we have our adjustment layers here, and really that's about all I want to play with right now. So we have the adjustment layers here, and these do different things like changing the brightness, or the contrast, and you can add them on or off by clicking the little eyeball, and there's, there's just a bunch of different ones that you can play with, so kind of try them out, see what they do see what you think, see how you might like to edit them. We have a variety on here. These are a really useful tool and what made them useful is that they no longer modify the original image, they are adjustments on top of that image and the reason why that's beneficial is because they don't damage the original image, they're not changing the original pixels. So the original pixels are only changed when you create your final saved JPEG or PNG or whatever file format you choose. In the past, we would, instead of using adjustment layers before we had them, we would have to go into image adjustments and modify stuff up here. And this actually does change the original pixels. How's that bird looking? That looks all right. And so now this changes on the original image itself, well, on the copy I made. Uh, but then you end up with all of these copies of different adjustments, or you end up not making copies, and then hopefully you don't mess anything up. Uh, and as you keep making changes to the pixels, it can deteriorate the quality, and it can make any artifacts more apparent. So that's the first thing to mention. Uh, the next thing I want to mention is blending options. Now, the way that blending options work is it's how one layer blends with another so if we just make a solid color thing here real fast yeah we'll go with blue our blending options are right here and it's how it interacts with the layer below it so some of them may not always appear to do anything depending on what you have above it and how it interacts with the one below it and uh, sometimes you'll get things that aren't useful at all but it just depends on what you have on the top and what you have on the bottom. And of course you can combine all of these with opacity to modify how much it is affecting that. Not only can you create this on like a solid color layer, but you could also create this on a copy. Or even on an adjustment layer. And this can also be useful too. Let's say that we have maybe something a little distracting. Maybe a color that we want to change. Like maybe I don't really like kind of that little bit of red tint there in his feathers. I could always double click on my foreground color. So just double click here. And I can steal the shade of blue. Actually, it's kind of a purplish color. I've got this new layer that I created just down here. So, new layer. And I can go in and I can just paint over kind of that reddish area and I can change this to color and that can help kind of hide that reddish area. Now it looks like I accidentally grabbed purple when majority is more of a bluish so let's get a blue. There we go and let's try that again. There we go. I think that's a little bit bigger than I want. 
The last thing that I want to mention is quick masks. The way that quick masks work is it essentially hides part of the image. So if I added a quick mask to this, that's this button down here, we get this quick mask. Now right now you're saying like, well that didn't do anything. Well yeah, it didn't. So whatever is white in the quick mask shows up and whatever is black doesn't. So if I grab my eraser and I make sure that the background is set to black, I can erase stuff from this layer here. If I wanted the whole thing to be erased really quickly, could just drag all the way across with the marquee tool, or I could also do Command A to select everything and press Delete. And I could go in with my paintbrush, assuming that I'm on white, and I could color in just the area that I want to be from that new layer, so maybe the area of my bird here. Now when you're using a quick mask, make sure that you actually have the quick mask selected because if I have this selected instead, this layer, and I try coloring, it's going to paint. So just be aware of that. So you want to make sure that you have your actual quick mask selected when you're doing this. And you'll be able to add stuff to it. Quick mask can also be done on these. All of these adjustment layers have a quick mask here. And so I can erase parts of this effect, which that one is doing nothing right now. To only have it affect certain parts of my picture. And there are other things that I can do with this as well. One of the other really cool things that you can do too is if you actually have maybe start with the lasso tool and you can kind of work around your critter or whatever area you want to be affected. Like maybe I want my bird to be just a little bit brighter. I can actually make that selection with the lasso tool. Maybe go into levels or brightness or any of these really. And I can brighten him. And you can see that when I had that selection made, it automatically made a quick mask with the selected area, the part that I was changing. And then I can just go in with the eraser, maybe zoom in a bit to be able to really make sure that I'm accurate and I can start erasing the area that I don't want in my selection. And hopefully that gives you the idea. So those are a couple really quick and powerful tools that you can use in Photoshop to quickly edit photos. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of them later, but there's just a quick introduction, enough to let you try it out and see what you think.